Hi, this is Eric here, and in this tutorial we're going to be going through an overview of the cash book. So first up, the cash book is like the financial heart of this program, and if I go into it, something that's really important with the cash book is that for all the reconciled transactions, the ones with the R being ticked, it must match up line by line with your your bank statement on your website on your bank's website um, and that's really important so at the end of every day the cash book balance that you have over here must match the balance that you have on your bank statement so basically it must be a one for cor one for one correlation between the two and most people use it, the cash book for calculating their GST and the end of year accounts by assigning a category to each transaction. Now, one thing with the cash book is it uses open-ended accounting. So there's no closing balances, no opening balances. There's no close off periods or anything like that. You just keep going. And then the reports have, um, for a report, you just select a certain date range, and then it'll extract the data for that date range to to make that report. Now, there's two ways of getting data into your cash book. The first is to manually type data in, and you can just type it in down the bottom, and then you can click Recalc to sort it if it's a transaction that needs to be a bit further up. Um, and the second way is to import your bank statements from the internet and that's the next tutorial that you'll um, be going through. Uh, but if it's like say it's a savings account and you've got 10 transactions per year, maybe you just type it in manually, it might be easier to do. Okay, so now let's just have a look at, if you first go to the bank account setup, so here you can set up all your bank accounts um, and you'll see that I've added a Visa card. If you've got a credit card where you can import your bank statements from the internet, then that's a really good way to go. So you can just create another bank account for that. But there is a way of doing credit cards without having a separate bank account. And you can also uh, put in petty cash um, I haven't done it in this case, but if you've got a petty cash box, you can create a virtual bank account and the bank balance is the amount of money that you've got in the petty cash box. And then you can, if you do a banking of the petty cash, you can transfer money from the petty cash account to your main account over there. Okay, now let's go to the category setup. So these are the categories here. Uh, all the things that appear in this column, in this drop box. So we'll go to cash book, category setup. And you'll see that there's three columns. There's income categories, so everything that adds to your profit. Expense categories, everything that, that subtracts from your profit. And balance sheet categories, these are categories that don't add or subtract to your profit. So for example, with transfer, which is for transferring from one account to another, if I transfer money from your main account to your savings account, that hasn't affected your profit. If I draw salary out of the business, I'm taking some of the profit out, but the profit is still the same. If I pay tax to the IRD, then I'm paying money that is theirs in the first place, and it, even though it's outgoing, it's not affecting your uh, affecting my profit. And if you purchase an asset, then that asset needs to be depreciated over years, so it's a depreciation that affects your profit or loss. Not it's not all done in one year. And if you want to move a category from one column to another, you can click on that. And if you want to add some new categories, you can 
and just add it at the bottom and next time you come back into the screen it'll sort it into alphabetical order. If you want to delete it you can click there and then hit the delete key or else if you want to delete a category if you want to delete a category, you can right click and then hit delete line and it's gone. And for New Zealand, uh, there's just one extra little thing over here which is exempt. Interest received is always exempt, so it doesn't go onto your GST return. Um, so there you go, there's the categories. Just like with categories, you always add transactions at the bottom and then you can click recalc to resort the date order. Okay, now let's have a look at some other things you can do. You can go right click, delete a line, undo, sort A to Z. Let's just sort something, uh, let's sort this column, sort A to Z and it's got all the blank lines first and then it's all sorted into order and you can do that with any column to put it back to normal you exit and go back in again and then it's in order you can also search for a particular piece of text so you can go right click find and I can search for Joe uh, in the current field, any part of the field, find next, and there you go, it's found it, and find next, and it's found the next one. So, there you go, that's how to uh, look for information in the cash book. Next, I'm going to show you how to mark invoices off as paid. So, over here, we've got a transaction for sales and each of these boxes is like an extension of the line that we're on it's for the less commonly used items and if I click inv it lists all the invoices that are outstanding and at the top between these two little lines it shows the amount that that where that matches that so in this case I know that it's for catworks so select that and it's put in the invoice date, invoice number and the customer. And then I can also allocate it to a project. So in this case I can say this is for that project. That's if you're using projects. So that's uh, explaining some of these boxes down here. Okay, next up we're going to have, have a look at a split. So here we've got a split. Now that's when one line item needs to be split between several different things. So if you double click here, it opens it. And here I've got sales um, where Norgrove's print shop paid for two invoices with one payment and so here we want it to be in the bank statement as one payment but it's really for two invoices so here we've allocated that one there and we've allocated that one there uh, so that's one example of a, of a split it can also be for if I say for example buy petrol and I split it between business use and personal use I can split it out. It might also be for say a loan which you're repaying and it's splitting it between principal and interest or it could be like for a credit card where you're paying a whole lot of things with one payment and we'll be showing you an example of that a bit later on. Okay next I'm going to show you how to merge two transactions to make them into a split. So let's say that these two lines should really be one line. So if I go right click, merge with, and then I click the other line. Are you sure that you want to merge, that you want to merge with this line? Yes. 
and now it's made it into a split and those two transactions are now in one transaction. So that's how you merge two transactions. Next I'm going to show you journals. So here's a journal over here, so double click. And the thing with journals is that the total income must equal the total expenses. So the overall effect on your bank balance should be zero. And in this case we um, having an expense of $20 and putting it against drawings. So basically I paid for something uh, that cost $20 and paid for it with cash. And if you want to see some more, you can click on help and that's the example that we've just looked at. And here's an example of receiving a loan. So if you buy a truck and so it's an expense of 54500 and to the business you get a loan of 54500 and the GST is correctly accounted for. Okay, now for credit card transactions. There's two ways of doing a credit card. And for the first example, I've done an Amex card. MX card and here I've just put all the business transactions into one payment and you might have 50 over here I've just done five and if you use your credit card for personal use as well then you can do two payments for your credit card one from your business account for all the business transactions and one from your personal account for all your personal transactions. So that's one way of doing a credit card and to separate it between business and personal. And the second way of doing a credit card is to have it as a separate bank account. So in this case we either type everything in from the statement or if you can import it from your credit cards website then you um, import it all and then from time to time you make a transfer from your checks or your uh, main bank account to your credit card account and then you do your payments. Now this only works if you always pay the whole amount off each month. If you're going to let your credit card build up and have a debt and you're sharing it between business and personal, then how do you divvy up the interest on that debt? It starts becoming messy. So that's fine, provided you always pay off your credit card in full every month. Okay, so um, you can also have petty cash, and you can look for help on petty cash. If you've got a cash register which is similar to petty cash then again look and help for how to do a cash register and that's basically it for the cash book I um, hope that you enjoyed it and uh, the next tutorial is going to be on how to import bank statements so I hope that you have a look at that okay see ya bye